All right, guys, it's that time of the year again here in East Texas for me to start planting my potatoes. All right, so here in East Texas, uh, we generally start planting potatoes right around Valentine's Day, they say. Uh, so mid-February. Um, uh, about a week or so ago, I went out to, actually I had to go to a couple feed stores and get some uh, seed potatoes. Now I recommend you go get seed potatoes rather than go to the grocery store and get organic uh, potatoes, although they would work also. Just that seed potatoes are certified disease free. Uh, they're certified potatoes and they are uh, disease free, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, so I'm going to start planting uh, my potatoes in a few days. Um, but there's one thing I wanted to uh, say real quickly is, well first of all I got some red skin potatoes, uh, I got some gold, and Yukon gold, that's what they are, and white potatoes. Um, I had to go through a couple different stores, uh, about 12 pounds of these, 12 pounds of this, and I think 10 pounds of the uh, white. Um, so yeah, I had to go to a couple different stores. The, the, the one feed store by my house it only had the red, so I got the reds. And then I went to another city, uh, and I got uh, the Yukon Gold and the whites, uh, white potatoes there. Um, but anyways, when I when I went to the first feed store, the guy didn't let me pick them out. He just went in there and grabbed a bunch of you know potatoes, and he weighed them and he gave them to me. Uh, the other store I went to, the feed store, they let me pick them out. So, <clears throat> what I try to usually do is buy, is get the medium potatoes. Not the real big ones and not the small ones. Um, now I've heard somewhere, and I don't know if it's true, if, if it is, let me know in the comments. Uh, either way. But I heard if you plant small potatoes, you'll get big potatoes from them. And vice versa, you know. Um, I don't know how true that is, so, but I do know one thing, if your potato is really, really big, uh, this is a, a fairly decent sized one, um, it's more, uh, it's an advantage for you if you cut them up into smaller pieces. Now, uh, most of my Yukon Gold and my white potatoes are medium sized, they're about this size, I'm not going to bother cutting those up. But my reds here, I see that I got... I got a lot of big ones in here, good size ones, you know. Like this one here, even. They're pretty good size. Uh, so, and I'm going to show you what to do here, uh, so you can get probably two, you know, two or three potatoes, or two or three plants. I'm sorry, out of one potato rather than just, you know, one one plant. Um, so let me show you how to do that now. All right, so what we need to do here is get one of your large potatoes and get a knife. Now, this knife, I had, I disinfected this knife. This knife is clean. I use a little rubbing alcohol on it to clean it up. Uh, what you want to do is uh, you want to cut in between the eyes here, okay? Uh, and in the UK, they call these chits, okay? Not to be confused with the other chit. <laughs> but that's C-H-I-T, okay? But anyways, um, you can get probably, let's see, one, maybe two potatoes out of this one here. So you, what you'd want to do is study where those eyes, eyes are and uh, let's see here, let's do this. So this piece here has got two nice eyes on it, we'll put that there. and. I could probably do this. I could probably do this. Here's I got. I got eyes on it here. Eyes on this one, and an eye on this one here. So essentially, out of that one potato and I, I got four plants. Okay, and I would recommend doing that with all your large ones. Now. After you cut it, you can't plant it right away. You gotta wait at least two or three days 
what will happen, the part that you cut will become dry and kind of like a leathery skin on the uh, potato. And only after about three days when you get that leathery skin on the potato, then you can plant it. Otherwise, if you plant it now, it, it'll, be disease, uh, it'll, it'll get attacked by insects and stuff like that that's in the soil. Uh, so anyways, now we're going to let that dry for about three days and then we're going to start planting potatoes. All right, guys, so I'm going to go through these and uh, cut up the ones that are big and wait about three days and then we're going to go plant these. All right, guys, it's been a few days now and I'm ready to plant the potatoes. Uh, it's really very basic, but I'm going to do something a little different this year and I'll explain it at near the end. Uh, now the potatoes I cut, the side that I cut, it's got that leathery skin I was talking about. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's not that raw flesh, you know. So that side you want to plant down and make sure you, the eye or the chit is straight up, okay? Now you can see my ground, the, the original dirt to my property is right here and the rest of this it's all uh, uh, compo decomposed uh, wood chips, and this is uh, mulched leaves. So I'm gonna set this right on the, at the ground, okay? And you want them about a foot apart or so. Now, your whole potatoes, you wanna try and get the eyes to be up, okay? Uh, even though these are growing to the side, most of them, see like this one here, you got the eyes here and here and here so most of them are in this part of the potato not down at the bottom so when I put this down put it on the ground there just kind of put it to where the the eyes are kind of facing up they will curl and go start going up okay and then after that we just want to cover them back up now try to cover them up with the chips that were near the bottom okay And then cover them all up and then at about three weeks you're going to start seeing the potato plant actually come sticking up out of the ground all right so just make sure you cover them up good all right as you can see i, I put a trench here so uh there's another way of doing it i have uh i'm gonna put a, a row of uh red a row of what is this gold in a row of white potatoes that I have and you can either do a trench like I did or you can just dig a hole and put the potato right in the ground and cover it up that would be obviously be the easiest way uh, in my situation uh, I'm gonna be planting peas with these also uh, peas are part of the legume family um, they're nitrogen fixing growing these, the, the, the beans, the, the peas together with the potatoes or with any other of your vegetables uh, will help the nitrogen in your soil. You have to have a certain type of bacteria. It's called rhizobium. And uh, those actually take the nitrogen out of the air and feed it into the root system of the uh, peas or any type of legume, uh, beans, all those type of plants, clover. Uh, and actually store the nitrogen in the root system. Um, also, I purchased 10 pounds of earthworms, composting worms. Uh, this, of course, is a back to Eden garden. I'm gonna get 10 pounds of earthworms and sprinkle them all throughout my garden here. My garden is back to Eden. It's all uh, decomposed, decomposing wood chips and leaf mulch. They're gonna be in heaven in here. <laughs> So, uh, and as you know, earthworm castings, their poop, is one of the most powerful fertilizers that there is. Uh, I used to raise worms. I have some videos uh, of uh, me having, uh, separating the worm castings from the bedding, and I'll put a link to that here. And uh, they, they produce a wonderful, wonderful uh, manure, you know, worm manure. It's called worm castings. Uh, so rather than raising the worms like I used to do, uh, I'm going to let them do their thing in the garden. They will come in here 
eat the uh, the, the mulched uh, leaves, the, the wood chips, and poop and mate. I mean, what better life is it than that, huh? <laughs> uh, and they'll multiply in here, and they won't leave because out here is just clay. Okay, I have just nasty clay over here. So they, they're going to stay here. If the environment is good, it's moist, not too wet and not dry, and they got plenty of food, which they will, they will multiply in here and give me a wonderful uh, uh, nitrogen, um, um, you know, setup in here. All right, so I'm going to get back to planting these potatoes. Like I said, all you got to do is put them in there about a foot apart, get them right to the ground, uh, put them with the eyes facing up as much as you can, cover them up completely. Now as they're growing, uh, during the growing season, uh, watch, make sure that the, none of the potatoes get uncovered, okay? Uh, you're going to want to keep them covered up because if they turn, uh, if, if they if, if they get uh, any sunlight on the potatoes, um, they'll turn green and that's toxic as you know. But to keep that from happening, you have to uh, keep them covered, all right? So keep mounting it up on the plant uh, if you see any of the potatoes starting to show through. So put them in uh, to the ground level, roughly, I don't know, six inches or more. Cover them up. In about three weeks, you'll see the uh, plant coming through your wood chips. And, uh, you know, they'll take off from there. And if you, as long as you're, there, it's, you're getting a rain every week or so in a back to Eden garden, you shouldn't have to water it. But if you go through a long spell, you know, dig down in there in a different area and see how moist it is down there. If it looks like it's getting kind of dry, uh, you know, give it a little water, but you really shouldn't have to in a back to Eden garden. We've been through summers here that are 100 degrees for a week, you know, or, or two weeks uh, in a row uh, with no rain and uh, didn't, didn't bother it one bit. All right, guys, uh, I just got done planting my potatoes and alongside with my potatoes, I'm going to plant some peas. Now, the reason why I'm planting peas uh, with my potatoes is the peas are a legume. Uh, along with your beans and even clover, the legume uh, family. They're nitrogen fixing. And what that means is they store nitrogen in their roots, in, in these little nodules, okay, these little bumps in the, in the root system. But in order for that to happen, you need a certain type of bacteria. That's rhizobium. Now this rhizobium bacteria, uh, if you have healthy soil, it's nice and dark, you have a lot of organic matter in there. Uh, and it's been around like that for a long time. You probably have that. And if you have no problem growing beans in the past, then you probably had the rhizobium bacteria in your dirt already. Uh, therefore, if you do a back to Eden garden on top of that, it'll work wonders. In my situation, I have red clay and almost nothing grows in there other than weeds. Um, so I'm going to inoculate my soil and my seeds that I'm going to plant with this rhizobium bacteria. You can buy this online. Uh, you really only have to do it once. Uh, so once you inoculate the seeds and the soil, that bacteria will take off in there and start doing what it does and all the organic matter. So uh, let me show you how to inoculate the seeds and the soil. All right, guys, what I have here is some Wando peas. I just put them, uh, I just put them in this bag. Uh, these are called Wando peas, uh, W-A-N-D-O. Uh, they're very heat tolerant, so if you live in the south like I do, and it's very warm all the time, these peas will do wonderful. Okay, that's why I got them. But these are shelling peas, but they're supposed to be very, very sweet. Okay, so swell, uh, shelling peas means that uh, you don't eat the shell, you gotta take the, the peas out of their pod and just eat the peas. They're not like sugar snap peas where you can eat the whole thing. Um, so what I did here is I got, I approximately figured out what I'm going to need here in peas to do here, uh, to plant here. Uh, what I did in here is I put just a tiny bit of water in here, just enough to get the seeds wet, okay? And if you notice, I, in fact, my seeds are uh, soaked it up already. Uh, what I did is put just a little bit of water in here, very little, uh, just to get the seeds wet, right? And then what I want to do, or what I did, I should say, is I bought some of this uh, bacteria. It's an inoculant, uh, and it's got all these different varieties 
of bacteria, but it has the rhizobium bacteria in here uh, needed to do the uh, um, nitrogen uh, fixing, okay, for the plant. So what I did, put a little bit of water in a, in a bag or a container or something, uh, put your seeds in there, get them all nice and wet, and then dump, sprinkle a little bit in this, maybe, I, I don't know, I'm just, I guessed, maybe a, a half a teaspoon or try that first and see if it looks like this, you know, it should be a little dark. And uh, mix it all up really good. And then what we're going to do is we're going to plant these in next to the potatoes, or right over the potatoes actually. And then afterwards I'm going to get some of this, maybe a couple of teaspoons, and put it in a gallon or two of water. And one of those, uh, in this right here, this water right here. And I'm going to go over where I seeded and inoculate the, uh, the soil even more. So I know that bacteria is in there for sure. All right, another thing I want to mention is the water that you use for the seeds and for your container here, make sure it's non-chlorinated. If you live in the city, uh, make sure you have a good carbon block filter uh, to filter out the uh, chlorine. I have well water here, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, so make sure you use non-chlorinated. Otherwise, if you use chlorinated water, you're going to kill the bacteria, right? So you're wasting your time. All right, so I got my uh, container here ready. I got my inoculant here. This here is a tablespoon. It's nice to save these things when you're using uh, different products or whatever. Uh, it's good to save them there. That way you can measure things out. So this is a tablespoon. I'm going to mix. I mean, I, this is just guesswork, okay? Uh, I'm going to mix a tablespoon of this stuff in there. Um, this whole bag should inoculate um, eight pounds of seeds. Okay, so it's powerful stuff. We're going to put that over there. Okay, now we're going to put our water in. Remember, use non-chlorinated water for this. And I'm pretty sure this is a two-gallon container, it looks like. And you want to get it nice and mixed in there. Yeah. If you have to, get yourself a stick. Kind of mix that up. It, it looks like it's kind of a lot of it's floating on top until it, the water. Uh, it's it's a very dry powder. This uh, inoculant. So until the, it gets absorbed, it absorbs the water. I should say. Just mix it up real good. And then we're gonna let that sit while I'm planting the uh, the peas. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a few peas here, uh, space them apart, I don't know, every, uh, I don't know, every six inches or so. Uh, maybe two or three peas and then space them apart six inches, another two or three peas. And just keep doing that all the way down. Uh, and, and then lightly cover them. And then we're going to water them, not actually water them, we're going to put that uh, two gallons right on top of uh, where I planted the seeds. They're actually in the soil, it doesn't really matter. You're just getting the, the bacteria in the soil. The bacteria, once they're in there, they do their own thing. They're going to multiply. They're going to go all over the soil. And like I said, you won't have to do this again. Once and you're done. Now, inoculating the seeds just guarantees that, that they're inside uh, the seed already. All right, guys, so I just got it done putting the peas in. Uh, I just ended up sprinkling them on, just, you know, from a two-foot height or so whatever, just kind of sprinkle them down over your potatoes. Uh, this stuff here is nice and mixed now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to lightly cover the, uh, 
peas that I just uh, put down. And then we're going to sprinkle this stuff just on top to get that bacteria just into the soil in general, okay? Uh, that way that when the root system gets going, they're there. Just give them a light covering. And if possible, when you're covering your uh, uh, peas, try and get the dirt that was down, or the dirt, or the chips that were more composted over them. And then the rest that are on the top that were not, you can put those on top. Okay, I'm done covering up the peas now. Uh, the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to put that water with that uh, rhizobium bacteria in there and just sprinkle it on top. Now we're doing it not to water the seeds or the ground, it's just to get the bacteria there. Okay, so I'm just going to be a light sprinkle and I'm going to put some more dirt over it, or chips I should say, and, um, and the bacteria will do their thing. That's all we're doing, just a sprinkle. That'll get the bacteria in there, and they know what to do. Now this bacteria is going to inoculate the, the compost, the composted wood chips that are in there. And once those peas and potatoes start taking off, they know what to do. Now, this container and this bag still has bacteria in it. As you can see, all inside here. So I'm just going to rinse it out and just dump it right on here. It's good to be frugal. Yep. There's millions of bacteria in just a small amount of water. Every little bit helps and they'll start multiplying in there, they'll turn into billions and trillions and, and all that wonderful stuff. Alright guys, that's basically how you do it. Uh, but to take advantage of that nitrogen, uh, you, got, you have to let the plant grow to its maturity just before it starts to seed or, uh, or produce a flower. Um, then what you do is you got to terminate the plant, kill it, okay, cut it and that'll lock that uh, nitrogen that it uh, took, that the bacteria gave it, and into its roots, and then that will slow release into your soil and feed your plants, the ones you planted next to it or with it. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably, I'm gonna do that, but probably just thin it out. In other words, uh, probably 40 to 50% I'm gonna terminate here and there, you know, just kinda you know, clean it up and uh, that way because I do want to eat some of these peas too <laughs> but that'll leave uh, enough root system in there full of that uh, nitrogen and it'll leach into my potatoes into your uh, tomatoes whatever you're growing okay um, so that's what you do you let it grow to it gets pretty mature the plant uh, the bean and just when it starts to flower or ready to produce its uh, um, bean, cut the, cut the uh, plant at the bottom, at the base, 
and uh, of course it'll kill the plant. Now those, the the uh, the part you took off, you can compost it, uh, put it, tuck it, you know, bury it back into the uh, ground, or as I'm gonna do, I'm gonna feed it to my chickens, and they'll produce manure, and then that's going back in here too. All right, guys, uh, you know, gardening is not as easy. Uh, a couple years ago, I thought it was fairly simple. You just put a seed in the ground and watch it grow. You put a little water and there you go. No, <laughs> no, it's not that easy. A lot of obstacles uh, and insects and bugs and, and nitrogen and phosphorus, potassium issues and just, and the, the, the micro uh, bacteria, the, 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 all the microorganisms in the soil, everything has to be living. It has to be, has to be like in the forest, you know? Um, so that's what we're, you're mimicking with the Back to Eden garden. But here we're speeding things up, letting the wood chips rot, inoculating your soil if you need to. Like I said, if you don't have clay, you got some pretty good soil, you never had too many issues in the past, that's perfect. You don't need to do this. Uh, I need to inoculate. Uh, but it would be helpful for you to plant um, any type of legumes, any type of beans, peas, even uh, uh, clover and stuff as a, as a cover crop for the winter time. Uh, that'll feed your soil. As long as you have root systems in your soil the whole time or in your bacteria garden, as long as there's always a root system in there uh, that you'll be uh, feeding all that microbiology in the, in the soil and the earthworms. You know, everything will work in harmony and that'll produce a living soil for you. All right, guys, so uh, I hope uh, you found this interesting and, and I hope you learned something from this. I know I sure did because, uh, you know, a year or two ago, I knew nothing about this. So a lot of research and do your research and you learn. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share, and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.